Hey guys, my name is Evan and welcome to Country View Acres. So this year we decided to make our own hay this year. So we had to buy all of our equipment to, to cut and bale hay and we had to fix our equipment and then we had to just go through the whole process of, uh, you know, getting it all baled up and put away and then selling some of that hay. So I thought I'd do a um, quick video here to kind of wrap up this year's first hay season ever and go over the total costs of what it costs for our, our hay equipment, what it costs to do all the repairs to the equipment and fix everything, and then overall, like how much hay we ended up getting, how much we ended up selling, and just how we ended up overall. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing I ended up buying was a hay baler. Um, I knew a hay baler could be really expensive and, and take a big portion of my budget. So I wanted to buy it first and um, I also knew I was going to buy a square baler because I don't think my tractors are big enough to, to make round bales. And a square baler, you can run on a 30, 40 horsepower tractor without any issues. So um, I was lucky enough to, to buy this off of a guy that I used to work with who had retired. And he was not going to do square bales no more. He was only going to do round bales. So he told me that he just got done using it that hay season. And it ran like 350, 400 bales or something without any issues. Said that it works fine. Um, he did show me a few things that were wrong with it. But I was able to pick this up for $400 off of him. So this is probably one of the best deals that I got, to be honest with you. And that's just because I knew the guy. Um, so um, $400 in a baler, that leaves me quite a bit of room, right, to be able to fix this if I need to. So I ended up fixing, I think it was just two things that I had to fix on here. I bought some pickup teeth for this because some of them were broken. And then there's actually a big spring on this side over here and it helps lift up on this pickup head, makes it float. And um, so I think all in all, that spring was a little over $100 just for that one spring. So overall, I, I, for repairs on this was $143.24. So this baler overall cost was $500. $43.24. I don't think I could beat that. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good price for a baler. So the next thing I needed to buy was something to be able to cut the hay field with. And you've got about three different choices. You've got a disc mower or a disc bind, and you can probably cut the fastest with that. That's the newest technology, and it costs the most. They're really expensive. And then before those, you know, they, people used hay binds. And I looked at hay binds online and they were still somewhat pricey. It looked like I'd still have to end up spending probably a uh, couple thousand dollars maybe to be able to get one. And then the technology before the hay bind was the sickle bar mower. And that was probably the cheapest option there was out there. And I had been looking on them online and stuff and it looked like you could find one for maybe somewhere between $700 to $1,500. And I, w I ended up finding this one at auction for $375. So I ended up buying it. So since I got this at such a good price, I still had a few hundred dollars of wiggle room uh, left and I could still be cheaper than buying one off of Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. And I still may have had to put money into those too. But I will say this is the piece of equipment that gave me the most amount of fits. I had to work on this thing the most. I basically replaced most of the parts on here, trying to get this thing to cut grass and hay the way I think it should. And I may just have higher expectations for a sickle bar than I, than I should. Um, but I went through this whole thing. I replaced all these rock guards. Um, I replaced all the cutters pretty much. I think there's about four down at that end that I didn't replace. I replaced the ledger plates, which are the cutters on um, the far ends of the bar. I replaced the wear plates and hold downs and a bunch of stuff trying to get this thing in good working order. So out of all the repairs I did to this sickle bar mower, I put $399.07 into it. So I actually spent more money on repairs than I did the sickle bar's initial, initial purchase. So I ended up with $774.07 in this sickle bar. Now that's actually probably still a pretty decent price uh, overall for this mower. And I could probably turn around and sell it and at least get the money I put into parts out of it. But overall, after the hay season is done, I will say that this is a very frustrating piece of equipment. And 
I will probably eventually look at a haybine instead. Uh, I think if I was going to do this all over again, I would probably go and look at haybines and buy a haybine instead of buying a sickle bar mower. I, that's, I mean, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have said that at the beginning of the season, right? I'm trying to keep my costs down. But after uh, having to put so much work into this and, uh, it, and just the frustration with it, I think, if I, like I said, if I was to do it all over again, I'd definitely be looking at a haybine instead of a sickle bar. So the next thing I needed to buy was a hay rake. I needed something to be able to rake that hay up into windrows so that I could pick it up with the hay baler. And um, there's several different choices out there. Um, they've got the wheel rakes. It's got the big wheels on it that, that roll the hay into a pile. Uh, you've got PTO driven rotary rakes that can uh, throw the hay into a pile. And then you've got what I have here, which is an older um, side delivery hay rake. It, it basically rolls the hay sideways and pushes it into a row onto the side. Now I found this at a, at a farm auction um, and I picked this up. There was a few hay rakes there and this is the one I picked out that I wanted to buy. Um, there, there was some new Hollands there and they have their gearbox driven and I couldn't get the gearbox uh, to go into neutral and the gearbox just didn't look like, um, like I trusted it, right? And this, is, this one here is a very simple one. It is a belt driven. It just has like three pulleys and it just runs off the wheels. Uh, it's ground driven. And the belt was in good working order. The pulleys looked like they were fine. So I ended up picking this up for $275 at auction. This is my cheapest piece of equipment. And uh, it has been a very good hay rake. This hay rake was also the cheapest one to fix. Um, There's only a few things I had to do to it. One, it didn't have a jack anymore, no way to jack it up. So I bought a trailer jack and put that on there. And then I had to replace, I don't know, 15 or so of these rake teeth on there um, because they were either missing, uh, bent and broken, or they were just worn too bad. And total cost to repair this hay rake was $69.15. So I got a total cost of $344.15 in this hay rake. Definitely the cheapest piece of equipment that I bought. And uh, it's actually probably been the most reliable piece of equipment and the best running piece of equipment that I had. So the next thing I needed to buy was a hay wagon. I needed to, um, something to be able to stack the hay up on and bring it back out of the field and maybe even store it on the wagon so that I didn't have to unload it. So I found this one on Facebook Marketplace and I think I paid probably about the average price for one. I bought this for $500. Now, after I've owned it, I've had a lot of people comment in the videos that they think this wagon looks small. And I never, I never really thought about that when I bought one. I figured all wagons were about the same size. But this one is only seven feet wide and 14 feet long. And you might be able to find hay wagons out there that are eight feet wide and maybe 16, 20 feet long. So I'll definitely pay attention to the size of the wagon um, if I go buy a second one. Now this one, um, really doesn't fit that much hay on it, to be honest with you. So it is probably a little bit small. I can only fit about 64 bales on here if I stack it four high. So the bad thing that ended up happening is when we hauled this wagon home, one of the tires ended up blowing out and shredded. Um, so I had to buy a whole new tire for the front here on this hay wagon. That was the most expensive repair to it. And then I built this rear standard here on the back because I thought I, maybe I needed something for the hay to lean against. And, but in all reality, if, I, if you cross stack your bales, I shouldn't need that. So that was probably an expense I didn't have to really, um, really have to do. But overall, um, repairs on the wagon was $143.25. So I've got $643.25 in this hay wagon. So that brings me to the last piece of hay equipment that I bought, and that is a hay rake. This is a a two rotor hay rake. It's PTO driven and it basically fluffs the hay, it throws the hay and stirs it up and helps it dry quicker. And I bought this right before our first hay cutting because I was getting a little bit worried about the time frame. I was afraid maybe it would take too long for the hay to dry and I was also worried that if the hay got rained on that I wouldn't have any way to really help dry it out. 
So I ended up buying this right before that first cutting. And this is my most expensive piece of equipment. And it's also the newest one I have. This is a 2004, so it's at least 40 years newer <laughs> than the rest of the equipment. But um, this is one of those pieces of equipment that you may not necessarily have to have to, to bale hay. But uh, this was just for peace of mind. That's why I bought it and to, to maybe save some time and, and maybe not have to take off as much work, vacation time, to be able to bale hay. So this was $1,250. I bought this off Facebook Marketplace. And then three of the tines uh, were broken. So I had to replace those. And um, that was $52.06. So I've got $1,302.06 in this hay tether. So overall cost for all five pieces of hay equipment and all the repairs was $3,606.77. So just a little bit over $3,600 is what it cost me to be able to start making my own hay or cutting and baling hay. So overall, I think I did pretty good. I mean, honestly, um, I got some really good deals on some of that equipment and it would be real easy to spend that much money on a baler. So, um, so I think I did pretty good keeping the cost down and staying within those goals of paying for cash for everything and uh, starting off small. So as I, as I go down this road, uh, maybe eventually I'll be able to upgrade and get some better pieces of equipment. So one thing we didn't talk about was the tractors. Um, I'm not gonna include tractors in on the price because we already owned the tractors before we ever decided to do hay. And in fact, most of the hay was done with this tractor right here. This is a Case 730 tractor. It's from 1961. And um, this tractor, when we bought this 41 acres, this tractor was included in on the purchase. So this came with the property. And uh, it's worked out fairly good. And then the other tractor we use is an, is an Alice Chalmers D17 tractor from 1959. So we're running two old tractors to do the the hay. Now, one thing I, I would like to mention, because if you're looking at old tractors to do hay, my biggest problem with them is got to be the hitches. Both of my tractors do not have a standard three-point hitch. The Alice Chalmers has a snap coupler hitch, and then I've got a three-point conversion that goes on there, but it's still not 100% right. It likes to sway, it likes to actually pivot and uh, become uneven and it just doesn't really work out real well as a three-point hitch. And this one has this eagle hitch. It's a fixed hitch. And if it's not a quick hitch compatible thing, it will not hook up to this. So there's several things that won't hook up to this. So I basically use this for towing. Um, so if you're looking at old tractors to do some of this, you know, old hay equipment, stuff like that, try to find one. My suggestion would be try to find one that does have a standard three-point hitch where you can adjust and lock the sway in, and uh, I think you're gonna have better luck than I have. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the hay field. So this year, we this is our first year making hay, so we started off small. We only actually baled three acres. Now, I know that sounds really small, but we've got another 15 acres that we can turn into hay uh, or pasture if we want to. So the reason we started off small like this is because we wanted to make sure that, that uh, we, we could kind of work through the bugs of the process and kind of get a system down and make sure this is something that we really wanted to continue to do before we planted more acres into hay. So uh, the first three acres we planted was in a orchard grass and alfalfa mix. Now that's probably considered a higher grade or a higher quality grade hay. And um, that's normally bought by people who have horses or somebody just looking for higher quality feed. And that normally sells for maybe a dollar or two higher than regular grass hay. So uh, that's what we planted that hay field in. But knowing this was my first year and that I am learning and I'm not, I'm not sure that the hay that I was making was good quality, I ended up just selling it at the price of what grass hay sells for. So I, d I didn't try to, to, you know, make a lot of money off this first year. I wanted to get this down. And when I know that I'm finally making good quality hay, then maybe I'll start to charge a little bit more for those bales. So the weather this year at the beginning of the year was super 
wet and it was hard to get out to the hay field uh, to get that first cutting. So we had a really heavy first cutting. And then after that, the weather turned dry. And the last two cuttings were mostly alfalfa because alfalfa just does better, has deeper roots. It does better in drier conditions. So our first cutting, we got 128 bales. And the next cutting was uh, 77 and the cutting after that was 76. So that ended up being 281 bales of hay this year. So if I would have sold all 281 bales that I made this year for only $5 a bale, um, the price of what grass hay was going for, I would have made $1,405 worth of hay this year. Now it's $468 or something like that uh, an acre. Now if I would have sold it for a dollar more, I would have been about $600 an acre. But uh, at the rate that I'm going at right now, it's going to take me a little over, you know, it's going to get, I mean, it's going to take me a third year to, to break even with all the equipment. So I think the overall, my overall take from that is that I am not baling enough hay for sure. Um, if I would have had eight acres of hay, I would have broke even the first year. So I think that would have been pretty good. Uh, so definitely going to plant another hay field next year. We're going to plant another three acres next year. So now that I've got my first year of cutting and baling hay behind me, uh, I've got a few takeaways, I think, from this year. I think the first one's going to be the sickle bar mower. It was very frustrating this year. Um, I think I've got it in good working order now. But even though it is, I, you can't have any moisture in the ground or the grasses and stuff's going to want to stick to the sickle bar and it's going to want to clog up. So it's still going to be finicky. It's going to be those, per, you got to have perfect conditions, I think, to get that sickle bar just to, to cut perfectly. So it'll definitely be the piece of equipment that I looked to upgrade first and, uh, or to replace. Probably regret going with the sickle bar. When it's all done and over with, I regret going with the sickle bar. I wish I would have gone with the hay bind. Um, my second take is going to be from the hay field itself. I wish when, it was, when it's all done and over with, I wish that I, I was going for high quality hay that I could sell for like a little bit more a bale, but uh, I wish I wouldn't have planted the field in alfalfa. Now that it's all done and over with, um, alfalfa is very touchy. If you want it to be good quality alfalfa, you've got to be really gentle with it. You don't want to knock off the leaves. You want to, um, you can't, you don't want to shatter the leaves. I mean, you just, it is, you just got to handle it gently and handle it as least amount as possible. And when it's all done and over with, I wish I would have just planted it in grass, I think. Uh, also, our animals, that we have these small Nigerian dwarf goats, and they like the alfalfa leaves, but they don't like the stems. So when I feed it to them, they leave lots of stems behind. They won't eat the stems of the alfalfa. So just for my purposes, um, even for the livestock I have, I think that it would be better off if I would just plant grass hay. So the next three acres that we plant, we'll be planting in some kind of an orchard, orchard grass mix. Uh, may have some other grasses, maybe some red clover, but I'm not gonna put alfalfa in the next field. Well, I think those are probably the two biggest takeaways I have from baling hay this year um, for the first time. And I'm really happy overall with the whole process. I think everything ran great uh, for the amount of money that I had bought it for and how much I put into it. I think I was really lucky uh, to have equipment that ran as well as it did. And I can, I think I can turn around and I can sell this equipment for at least the money I have in it, or maybe even more. Um, so I think I can at least break even with my equipment uh, if I ever did want to get it out of hay or if I ever wanted to upgrade to something else. So I think I, I think overall, I think uh, I was pretty lucky really to be able to, to get equipment uh, that was as good as it was for the price that I did. So I think that's it uh, for this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy all the hay videos this year. That was a lot of work, and it feels like a big accomplishment to me to finally kind of get that all done and do that all for the first time. So uh, next year, there'll be, there'll be more videos. I'm sure next year, baling hay, we'll be planting another hay field next year. And maybe this winter time, we may be working on some of this hay equipment, trying to get it uh, fixed up, may even try to paint some of it. So uh, that's it for this video, guys. So. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.